LEGO games. One thing we all love is the characters. From the very beginning with the LEGO Star Wars games, to LEGO Indie, to the LEGO Batman games, now to LEGO Marvel and LEGO Jurassic World where you can play as dinosaurs. And that's one thing the LEGO games have nailed to perfection, the character rosters. With LEGO Batman 1 having just under 50 characters and now compare it to LEGO Marvel 2 with just over 200 characters, they have come a long way. Anyway, I bless the reins down in Africa because we're going to be ranking these bad boys. Anyway, you know how it is. Cue the music. So, hello, hello, hello there guys, I'm Rugged Eagle and I do lots of LEGO content on my channel, so if you do like what you see, feel free to subscribe, it is up to you. But if you do go to enjoy, make sure you go drop a like, and anyway, let's get into the rules and regulations. Okay, so the main rules are, I am not going to be letting the soldier affect my ranking. Also, favouritism will not be affecting my ranking neither. Neither or neither, I think it depends where you are in the world. But anyway, I'm going to treat all the IPs the same because I'm pretty much that way anyway. I love Harry Potter just the same amount as I love Star Wars and Lord of the Rings and all the other IPs that have actually been put into LEGO games. So the main factors we are going to be looking at is the quality of the roster. The quantity doesn't really matter. You can have 500 characters or just 50 characters. It's mainly the quality of the characters and how unique they are and what they bring to the table in terms of abilities, along with how much fun them characters are to use and memorability but mainly this is just a bit of fun please comment down below what your favorite lego game is in terms of the character roster but anyway now that you know the rules and so do i let's get into it so coming in at number 25 on our list is lego indiana jones 2 now let me just begin by saying I adore both of the LEGO Indie games. I love LEGO Indie 1 and I really do enjoy LEGO Indie 2, especially with online multiplayer. But in terms of character rosters, I've had to put LEGO Indie 2 at the bottom because whenever you are playing through a LEGO Indie game, the main character in the LEGO Indiana Jones games is literally Indiana Jones and you unlock him on the very first level of the game. There are some other good characters such as Henry Jones, Indiana Jones' dad, along with Mola Ram, some of the boss characters characters can be pretty fun and the rest of them are just filler characters such as the army guards and stuff. Now in LEGO Indy 2 you can also unlock the Crystal Skull as a character and it doesn't really bring nothing much to the table but it does look pretty cool. So Indy 2 is at the bottom of the list. So that means that number 24 is LEGO Indiana Jones 1 The Original Adventures. Now these two for me could go any way round because at the end of the day it's not to say LEGO Indie games have a bad roster because they do not, it's just the main highlight of the LEGO Indie games is literally Indiana Jones and a couple of boss characters. So for me I have to put Indie 1 above Indie 2 because in Indie 1 there is actually more characters than in Indie 2 and you can also get Han Solo as a bonus character and he's pretty cool to get. Anyway next up at number 23 on the list is LEGO World. Now, out of all of my LEGO game ranking videos, LEGO Worlds is always a weird one to fit in because at the end of the day, it follows an entirely different formula on an entirely different engine because it is a sandbox game. Now, LEGO Worlds is a really weird LEGO game in the LEGO game community because a lot of people love it and some people don't really like it because it's not their scene. It really depends if you love building and a creative person, you really enjoy LEGO Worlds. But talking about the characters in LEGO Worlds, I do think they're pretty solid. So the characters in LEGO Worlds are actually pulled from real life LEGO IPs, such as Ninjago, you can get Ninjago characters in there, you can also get Monster Fighter characters in LEGO Worlds, and I really like that, if you're a massive fan of actual LEGO, you'll really enjoy this game's character roster, you have all the classic space characters and all the LEGO minifigure characters in the game, it's a great roster if you're into that. So that's why I'm going to put LEGO Worlds at number 23, because it is a mixed bag. Now parkour on its way into number 22 is the LEGO Ninjago movie video game. Now when I was playing through the LEGO Ninjago game, I always found myself being the main ninjas, such as Lloyd, Kai and Cole. Now for the main ninja characters along with Master Wu, I have to say they nailed them, they're so fun to use, but the rest of the character roster for me is just a little bit stale. Garmadon is pretty fun to use, but the rest of them are just kind of filler, and you do get the classical versions of Lloyd and Kai and all that, but for a recent LEGO game in 2017, there is just short of 100 characters in the LEGO Ninjago game. And to say most of them are pretty filler and nothing special, that's why I'm going to have to put Ninjago at 22. But just before we move on, if you're not a fan of the Ninjago IP, I 
definitely recommend playing this game. I wasn't a massive fan of the Ninjago IP, but I had a blast playing through this game because the combat is fantastic. And like I said, they did nail a few characters such as Master Wu. They're so fun to use. So if you haven't played it, try and play it if you can pick it up somewhere. So anyway, swooping its way into number 21 is LEGO Batman 1, the video game. I mean, just look at the roster of LEGO Batman 1. I grew up with that, and now look at LEGO Batman 3 and LEGO DC Super Villains. It's just uncanny, but nevertheless, LEGO Batman 1 is fantastic. I really do like the character roster. It's short and sweet. Now, LEGO Batman 1's character roster is a great depiction of what to expect in a LEGO Batman game. It's got all the main villains such as Joker, Riddler, Mr. Freeze, the Mad Hatter, Man Bat. It's got all them great villains along with the great heroes like Batman, Robin, Nightwing. And this was before LEGO character rosters are full up with many variants for one specific character. There is literally two variants in this game. Catwoman has a different variant along with Joker. But saying that, a lot of the LEGO Batman 1 character roster is full of henchmen, but they were two really fun characters to try and unlock, such as Ra's al Ghul, you had to get all the mini kits to unlock him, along with Hush, you had to rescue all the citizens in peril. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the LEGO Batman 1 character roster is short and sweet, coming in at just under 50 characters in the roster, and each character does feel unique, such as Mr. Freeze and the Riddler and Two-Face. It's a great roster, and it's short and sweet. Anyway, let's move on to number 20. So, at number 20 is LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, this for me falls under the same category as LEGO Ninjago. They have nailed a lot of the characters, but I always find myself being the same characters, and the rest of the characters in the roster are pretty filler, and you don't be them after you purchase them. Now, that's not to say the characters aren't accurate to the IP of Pirates of the Caribbean. They are, but whenever you're playing through Pirates of the Caribbean, you're either being Captain Jack Sparrow, Davy Jones, Blackbeard, Captain Barbosa. You're being the main iconic characters, and let me just say, they captured Johnny Depp's acting in Lego Pirates of the Caribbean fantastically. Just the way that Captain Jack Sparrow runs and moves, it's so accurate to the film. And that's one thing I have to praise about the LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean game. They put a lot of time into the main characters, such as Blackbeard. He's got some really cool, unique abilities, such as he can shoot electric out of his sword. He can also pick you up and full-on kick you across the map. So yeah, the moral of the story is Pirates of the Caribbean has a solid roster in terms of the main iconic characters, and the rest of them are just full with characters you're going to purchase being once and then never be him again. Sorry about that, ancient sailor. But anyway, coming in at number 19 is LEGO Harry Potter Years 1 to 4. Now, for the time, and still to this day, LEGO Harry Potter's Years 1 to 4 has one of the largest rosters, coming in at 167 characters. Now, the LEGO Harry Potter roster has all the main Harry Potter characters you can think of. It has the main professors, along with Harry Potter, Dumbledore, it has all the main villains, but when I'm playing through LEGO Harry Potter, it doesn't really matter who you're being, because at the end of the day, they all have the same spells, except from if you want to access dark magic, you're going to have to be someone who can use dark magic. Now, coming from a Harry Potter fan myself, I really do like how they captured the actual actors in the game, such as Professor Snape. His idle animations and how he moves throughout the game, it's very accurate to the character. And my favourite Harry Potter character of all time, Gildroy Lockhart, he is very accurate to how he is in the film. Now, there are a few characters in the LEGO Harry Potter roster, like the Milkman, but to be fair, I quite like the Milkman. I think he's a good laugh to be, and he's a pretty funny character to be in the game. So that's why Harry Potter comes in at number 19. So you probably saw this coming, but at number 18 is LEGO Harry Potter Years 5 to 7. Now, LEGO Harry Potter Years 5 to 7 just basically expands upon Years 1 to 4 and adds a few new characters to the roster from the newer films, such as Bellatrix Lestrange. She's a super fun character to use and very accurate to the films. However, though, I just want to say Years 5 to 7 has so many variants for Harry, Hermione and Ron. There is so many outfits for them characters, it's ridiculous, and it probably takes up around 50 50 slots in the roster, I'm not even joking to you. And the game comes in at 200 playable characters, which is a lot of characters for 2011. And one thing I always remember about this game is how Professor Slughorn can basically turn into a couch. I did that so many times as a kid. I do prefer Years 1 to 4 as a game, but these two could go any way round really. At the end of the day, it's personal preference. Let's move on to number 17. Clocking its way into 17 is LEGO Lord of the Rings. 
Now, LEGO Lord of the Rings is my favourite LEGO game of all time. I love LEGO Lord of the Rings. Fantastic open world, and it does have a strong character grip. Now, if you've never watched a Lord of the Rings film and you just dive into this game, the characters aren't going to really differentiate all too much because they either swing a sword or they shoot arrows. It's either or. Or they could swing an axe. I forgot to mention the axe. Now, coming from a massive Lord of the Rings fan, I'm really happy with how they captured the characters from the films, especially Gollum. They nailed how his animation looks when he's walking and he's attacking. I love Gollum in this game. I think they nailed him to perfection. But no matter what you give me, you can give me a sword, you can give me a bow, and you can give me your axe. You're coming in at number 17. <laughs> right, well, anyway, coming in just outside the top 15 at number 16 is LEGO Movie 1. But anyway, just before we move on, if you are enjoying today's video, feel free to subscribe. It's up to you. I do all sorts of LEGO videos just like this. And if you are enjoying it, please go to drop a like and show some support. Anyway, let's crack on. So LEGO Movie 1's character roster was quite unique for the time because this was the first ever time in a LEGO game that we saw different IPs collab together in the Lego Movie character roster. For example, in the Lego Movie game you could have Green Lantern, Batman, Gandalf and all the characters from the actual Lego Movie and it was a pretty solid roster for the time. And that's one thing I love about the Lego Movie character roster, it throws in all these different IPs and it has something for everyone. It even has some classic Lego minifigures from the actual Lego minifigure series line. Also it has Ninjago, but nevertheless, if you actually look, the character grid is pretty solid at the top of the grid. You've got all the Lego Movie characters and all the different IPs, and then when you look towards the bottom of the grid, it's pretty filler. You've got all the henchmen and all them other characters that you don't really matter about in the Lego Movie. They're literally just civilians. But overall, it was a pretty fun roster for 2014. Let's move on to number 15. So, swooping in at number 15 is LEGO Batman 2. Now, let me just hold the line, love isn't always on time. I swear when I was younger, there were more characters than this in LEGO Batman 2. It's just the thing, we grow up and all the character rosters these days, they're so massive. When I was younger, this was literally the size of the roster. But nevertheless, very similar to LEGO Batman 1, LEGO Batman 2 is pretty solid in terms of the characters you'll expect to see in a LEGO Batman game roster. And one good thing about the LEGO Batman 2 character roster, they actually removed quite a lot of the filler characters. As you can see, there is not many henchmen on the grid. And you gotta remember, this is 2012. I remember when I picked up LEGO Batman 2 as a kid, and I was so psyched to see Superman and Wonder Woman and Aquaman and Green Lantern all in a LEGO Batman game. It blew me away at the time, and I have to say, they made them all pretty unique, except from Flash could have run a little bit faster. And one thing that I loved about LEGO Batman 2 is actually how you unlock the characters. You kind of had to find them in the open world and do like a mini boss battle and then you got to purchase them. But if you do want to get all the characters in LEGO Batman 2, it's a pretty big chore because you have to get all the gold bricks to literally unlock Supergirl. Also, just before we move on, LEGO Batman 2 were the first LEGO game to introduce DLC packs. As you can see at the bottom of the roster, that entire lineup is all the DLC characters. And yes, I will be adding the DLCs onto the roster because mainly the DLCs are just extra and just add onto the roster anyway, so I might as well include them in the ranking. Now, next up at number 14 is LEGO City Undercover. Now, LEGO City Undercover is a really weird one to put in because it's not per se a character roster. It's more outfits for Chase McCain, but the outfits are pretty wicked that you can put on Chase McCain. Now, let me just stop you there. In LEGO City Undercover, there is a total of 305 characters to unlock, coming in at one of the biggest rosters in a LEGO game. Now, I've put LEGO City Undercover here because if you are a fan of LEGO, you'll really enjoy the roster. A lot of them are LEGO minifigure characters, there are some pretty cool outfits you can unlock for Chase McCain. And yeah, it's a pretty solid roster and it is really fun to customise your character with all the different parts with the 305 characters. So I'm going to put LEGO City Undercover here because I do admit I quite like it being different to all the other LEGO games. Dropping in at the unlucky number 13 is LEGO Movie 2. Now, I just want to start off by saying LEGO Movie 2 is my least favourite LEGO game, but I do still enjoy it. Like I said, there's no bad LEGO game for me. And I have to say, the roster in LEGO Movie 2, I really do enjoy. And I really like how they laid it out. 
Now, everything I said about LEGO Movie 1, how all the different IPs come together, it's the same thing in LEGO Movie 2, and you do have some unique characters, but the one thing I really do like about LEGO Movie 2 is the unique variants that they added upon certain characters. They look really cool, and it's nice to unlock them. And one of the main things I love about the LEGO Movie 2 character roster, they have separated the main characters from the filler characters. All them characters that you don't really matter about who are just civilians, they have actually been separated into their own personal section on the character grid. So yeah, LEGO Movie 2 is my least favourite LEGO game, but it is one of the best character rosters for me. I really like how they laid it out, and I might have to go back and play LEGO Movie 2 again. I'll see. At number 12 on the list is LEGO Incredibles. Now, I remember when they announced the LEGO Incredibles game, a lot of people were thinking, how are they going to fill up a character roster with around 100 characters from the Incredible characters? And I have to say, they've done a great job because they added Pixar characters to the roster. Now, the main thing I praise LEGO Incredibles for in terms of characters is how well they made the animations for the main characters, like the Pixar characters and the LEGO Incredibles. I mean, take Wally for example. Wally in LEGO Incredibles is exactly how I would picture Wally in a LEGO game. He's got some really cool abilities, his animations are just perfect to the actual character of Wally. And same goes to apply to Woody and Sully. And I think one of the funnest characters in Incredibles is literally Mr. Incredible. I really love how when he runs, his shoulder barges, everything, he could knock cars out the way. He's so fun to run around as. And same as Lightning McQueen, he's a wickedly cool character too. And I think this is the main highlight for me and for other people why Incredibles has such a good character roster. A lot of the characters, yes, are pretty filler, but the main characters such as the Pixar characters and the Incredible family, I have to say, they nailed them all. So landing just outside the top 10 is LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens at number 11. Now, as you all know, LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens is mainly based off the one Star Wars movie, The Force Awakens, and a lot of the characters have come out of Force Awakens, and they are pretty bland. There's some really good characters there, but a lot of them are just First Order Stormtroopers, and they really do fill up the roster. But they did go to add the Carbonite Bricks, which allowed you to unlock 35 characters from the other trilogies of Star Wars. Now, for Star Wars fans, the Force Awakens character roster is pretty well balanced. You've got original trilogy characters in there, you've got prequel characters, and you've got sequel characters. So no matter which trilogy is your favourite, the Force Awakens has something for you. And I really do like that about the Force Awakens roster. Now, the main thing that's putting Force Awakens even higher for me at number 11 is the DLC character packs in the Force Awakens. The DLC characters are done to perfection, and I really enjoy using the DLC characters. Just for example, take the Inquisitor from Star Wars Rebels. When you jump in the air, they actually glide with their lightsaber like they do in the TV show. So yeah, just for summary, Force Awakens has a lot of characters in the roster. It's got some bland ones like loads of First Order Stormtroopers, but for Star Wars fans, it's got something for everyone out of every trilogy, and I do praise it for that. So that's why Force Awakens lands at number 11. And just before we dive into the top 10, when researching this and trying to put my list together, I just want to say it was really difficult because every single character roster is amazing throughout every single LEGO game. TT Games, you've done a fantastic job on all of the character rosters. Let's move into the top 10. So at number 10 on the list is LEGO Jurassic World. So LEGO Jurassic World, a lot of the characters don't scream out amazing in the roster because at the end of the day, they're just archaeologists and characters from the film such as John Hammond and Alan Grant. But the way they captured their animations in the game, it's nearly perfect to how the actors played them, such as John Hammond. I love John Hammond in LEGO Jurassic World, along with Ian Malcolm. There's some really strong characters, but the main thing in Jurassic World is the dinosaurs. Now, yes, they are actual dinosaurs on the character grid, but I'm going to count the big dinosaurs and the rest of the dinosaurs that you can be a part of the character roster, because at the end of the day, you can be them and they are a character. So I'm going to put them in with a roster, and that's one reason why a lot of people love LEGO Jurassic World. And not just because of the dinosaurs, I really do like the character grid, because I'm a massive fan of the Jurassic Park films, I do think they capture the characters pretty well. But yes, if you're not a fan of Jurassic Park and you barely know any characters, they're all just going to be very similar. But the main selling point to Jurassic World is literally the dinosaurs, so I think it's deserving of a top 10 position. 
Jumping in at number 9 is LEGO Hobbit. Now the LEGO Hobbit character grid has everything you'll expect to see in a LEGO Hobbit game. Yes, a lot of the character grid is full of the dwarves, but the dwarves have their own personality and when you're playing through the story, you kind of get to know them all and what abilities they have, and I do love that about Hobbit. My favourite dwarf being Dwalin. Dwalin is so much fun in the game with his hammer and you can switch up the weapons with each character and that's one thing I do love about the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit games. But let's just say you know absolutely zero characters from the franchise of Hobbit. There is some really fun characters to use in the game and unlock, such as the Goblin King. He is a massive minifigure and some of the orcs are pretty cool. And like I mentioned earlier, they captured all of the personalities for the dwarfs really well, and one of my favourite characters is Radagaster Brown. The way he runs, it's so accurate to the film. I really love Radagaster Brown in this game, he's min. And very similar to Lord of the Rings, they captured Gollum amazingly. Now dropping in at number 8 is Lego Star Wars 3, The Clone Wars. Now for me, Clone Wars 3 has a super well-rounded roster. Now back in the day, it was even better, but looking at it now in 2021, I have to say it's aged really well. A lot of the characters are solid and very unique. You've got all the main Jedis in the Clone Wars show, you've got all the main clones, and the good thing about the clones in Clone Wars 3, they're not all very similar. They all have different weapons, such as the Death Machine Minigun Clone Trooper. He's so fun to use, along with the Rocket Trooper. I really like how they differ differentiate them. Now in terms of characters from the Clone Wars they've done a fantastic job but one of the main highlights for me is when you collect all the mini kits in a certain level you can actually unlock a character from the complete saga and the even better thing about it they actually have the aesthetic look from the complete saga as if they've been pulled out of a 2007 game. Now one of the coolest things about the Clone Wars 3, you can actually unlock Starkiller from the Force Unleashed games as a playable character, along with Savagia Press, so I have to say, Clone Wars 3, you have a mint character roster. Next up at number 7 is LEGO Star Wars The Complete Song. Now, if it was personal preference, I would put LEGO Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars above LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga, because do not forget, this just isn't my list. As I conducted lots of research by asking people on my YouTube comment sections along with doing YouTube polls, I also went onto Twitter and Discord to get in lots of feedback on how to put this list together. But it doesn't really matter how this list goes around, it's just a bit of fun, because every character roster is fantastic, as I mentioned earlier. But nevertheless, the Complete Saga has a solid character grid. Even still to this day, it's got everything you need. Now you have to remember the Complete Saga is basically two games put into one, LEGO Star Wars the video game and LEGO Star Wars 2 the original trilogy. It's both of them character rosters just clumped together and that's why the character roster in the Complete Saga is really well done. It's got every character you'll expect to see from the movies 1 to 6. But I remember back in the day when I was a kid, unlocking Darth Maul or Darth Vader and even Palpatine, they're so fun to use. It's so good to get a dark side character in that game. Along with the character of Yoda, it was always so funny to me back in the day as a kid how slow Yoda moved, but the minute you pull the lightsaber out, he turns into some madman. Anyway, moving just outside the top 5 at number 6 is LEGO Batman 3. Now, LEGO Batman 3, again, is one of them LEGO games in the community that is hit or miss. You either love LEGO Batman 3 or you don't really like it at all. And I think the main reason for that is the open world in LEGO Batman 3 kind of pulls the game down. But I still enjoy every LEGO game. And the character roster in LEGO Batman 3 is super, super solid. It's one of the best character rosters. It's just a shame that the game's open world didn't live up to people's expectations. Now, one of the main highlights about LEGO Batman 3's character roster is it's got a lot of characters from DC that you would not expect to see in a LEGO Batman game. And a lot of the roster does focus on the Lantern Courts, but nevertheless, it's still got other stuff like Batman from 1969. I really love that about the LEGO Batman 3 roster. And the DLC packs, you can have characters from the Dark Knight. It's a really solid game in terms of characters. It's just a shame that the game itself, in terms of open world, like I said, it didn't live up to many people's expectations. You might have liked how they did the open world, I'm not that keen on it. But the character roster, I'm super keen on that. So coming in at the top 5 is LEGO Dimensions. 
Now, I don't want to spend too long on Dimensions. I think you know by the name itself, LEGO Dimensions, why it's got such a good character grid slash roster. But the only massive downfall to Dimensions is the cost. And that's the thing. Not everyone can get all the characters. So that does ruin the character grid. If you don't have a lot of money, you're only going to be playing as Batman, Gandalf and Wildstyle. It's going to be one of the worst character grids. But if you have a lot of money, you're going to love the game. You're going to have so many characters from so many different IPs. And the thing is, they don't even sell them anymore, so you can't even complete the grid. Anyway, landing just outside the top three at number four is LEGO Marvel Avengers. Now, from here on out, all the LEGO Marvel games have fantastic rosters, and they could go any way around just depending on your personal preference. LEGO Marvel Avengers mainly focuses on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, along with that, they also threw in a couple of bonus characters from the comics that you wouldn't really know, but I think the roster in Avengers is really well-rounded, and it's got everything for every single type of Marvel film. Fuck. And I don't need to beat around the bush, because at the end of the day, the LEGO Marvel games are just so solid in terms of characters. There's no bad character, because literally they all are superheroes, and they're all unique. So that's why Marvel Avengers is at number 4. So before we dive into the top 3, if you have gone to enjoy today's video, please go to drop a like and show some support. But anyway, at number 3 is LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 1. Now for 2013, this blew every single person away. Compare it to LEGO Batman 2's in 2012 and compare it to 2013 with LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 1. The character grid in Marvel 1 is absolutely fantastic. It's got so many beloved Marvel characters, including Deadpool. Now, as I mentioned earlier with LEGO Marvel Avengers, the LEGO Marvel games could go any way around really for you. It's just personal preference, but I think I prefer Marvel 1's character roster to Avengers, just a little bit more. Also, LEGO Marvel 1 has X-Men 2. But anyway, coming in as runner-up at number 2, Two on the list is LEGO DC Super Villains. And I just want to stop it there. This game is fantastic for how they captured each of the DC characters. It's ridiculous, especially the main villains, such as Deathstroke when you're running around and how he jumps his animations. Captain Cold when he's going across the map, he shoots ice on the floor. They've done unique stuff for every single character, and they all do feel different to each other. And when I was playing through LEGO DC Super Villains, I'm so shocked at how good this LEGO game is. Seriously, if you have not played a LEGO game for some time, pick up DC Super Villains. The character roster, fantastic. The open world, amazing. The story is mediocre, but nevertheless to say, it's a mega solid LEGO game. And that leads one more to be at the top of the list. Coming in at number one is LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2. Now, LEGO Marvel 2 and LEGO DC Super Villains could have gone any way round for me, but a lot of people, when doing my research, put Marvel 2 above it. And I have to say, Marvel 2's character roster, they go and explore everything from the comics, and the best thing about it, you can even read up about it. Say you don't know a character, but you really enjoy them in the game, you can read up about them and see what comic they first appeared in. And I think why Marvel 2's character roster is so wickedly good is because it's based on Chronopolis and it's pulling all of these different time zones together and it just makes a fantastic roster. You've got like Western Captain America, you've got Hitmonkey, all these weird characters from the comics and they're great. And if you're a massive Spider-Man fan like me, you'll love this game in terms of characters from Spider-Man. You've got this classic noir Spider-Man, you've got the futuristic Spider-Man, you've got Spider-Ham. There's so many different Spider-Man variations in this game, it's great. And talking about detail in certain characters, when you're playing as Star-Lord, when you hold down a certain button, you can actually pull out his music and listen to it while shooting every single thing around you. It really is great. And in LEGO Marvel 2 and DC Supervillains, they do have really good DLC character packs. They're really good. But anyway, that is the end of my ranking for all the character rosters. And just before you go, I just want to let you know, it could have gone any way around because all the character rosters in all of the LEGO games, they are fantastic. And it's one of the best things about LEGO games, the character rosters. It's the same when you're a kid and you pick up a LEGO set. You mainly get it for the LEGO characters, don't you? Don't tell me different. But anyway, if you did enjoy this video, I've got lots of other videos like this. I have ranked all the open worlds, I've reviewed every single LEGO game in 2021 standards, and I've also ranked every single LEGO game. You can check out the playlist at the end of the video. If you did go to enjoy, feel free to subscribe, I do lots of content like this. But anyway, I want to thank you for watching today's video, hope you have a good day, and I'll see you all in a bit. Adios.